Hello, my name is Chloe, welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you my worst books of 2022. As always, I will preface this by saying these are the books that I disliked the most this year that I read. If I've picked one of your favourite books, it is not a personal attack on you, um, and I'm very glad that you enjoyed it, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. I have already posted my best books of the year video, which I will link down in the description if you'd like a more positive, upbeat take. But in that video, I picked my top eight books of the year, so I decided to mirror that exactly and pick my worst eight. These are all worst books for different reasons. Um, I personally have not enjoyed them, and I've probably rage read a few of them. So let's just get stuck in with one that I think most people will agree on. Um, number eight is Freed by E.L. James. This is the Fifty Shades book as told by Christian rather than Anna, so it's Fifty Shades Freed flipped around to Freed. I read this in July. I read it when I was away with Cole and um, his dad even said to me, why are you reading that? You look miserable. Uh, I was miserable. I am just stubborn. This book was almost 800 pages long and on reflection, what was the point in it? Genuinely, I did not see a point in it by the time I got to the end. I just didn't really care all too much and seeing as you know the ending of the story anyway because we've read Fifty Shades so we know what's going to happen reading it all from Christian's perspective and adding at least 200 pages to the story was just a little bit redundant and I didn't have a good time with it I still read it all though because I hate myself Number seven, this is gonna make some people angry, we have Feed by Myra Grant. So I read this in August and this was my Chloe's Crime Scene Corner pick and I know there are many people that really liked this book. I hated it. This is a zombie story and I was really interested to see um, how zombies would then integrate with normal life, which I think this book did really well. So it was a lot of just continuing to live and work and you know, go out to eat, but zombies exist at the same time. And that was really, really good. I think my issue with this book, I don't think, I know my issue with this book, is there were no mentions of it being following a political campaign. On the blurb, on anything I'd read online, there were no mentions of this. Um, and it was what 85% of the book was about. It's about a team of young reporters who join the political campaign trail of somebody trying to be the next president. And I didn't care. <laughs> I, if I wanted to read that, I would read like a contemporary, a literary fiction, something happening in today's date with no dystopian element. I didn't want to read it, so I didn't want it in my zombies and I feel like it ruined my zombies. So for this one, I think I'm more angry with how the book was marketed than how it was actually written. Because I do love Into the Drowning Deep by Myra Grant. So it's not the writing, it's the story sucked. Next up we have The Unheard by Nikki French and I was lucky enough to be on a read-along for this book but I really disliked it. The first hundred pages or so I was quite intrigued but the intrigue just slowly slowly dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped as I read the next day's chunk because it was a read-along um, until we got to the end and I didn't care anymore, really did not care. And adding to the fact that I didn't care, I don't even remember enough of a description of this book to give it to you and have it make sense. All I know is there was a woman, her ex-husband and their daughter and the daughter is like drawing pictures of this dead lady, maybe? Um, and the mom is getting quite concerned. She's contacting the police a lot and she does feel like somebody has been murdered. Um, by the time we got to the end, the murderer was very clear, very not a surprise at all. Um, and I don't know whether that was because I worked it out, which I never do. So I think it was that you were told it so clearly that it wasn't a shock and it was just dull. And the main character was potentially the most irritating main character I have ever read from. And that is a big statement for me, but I would have... I would have charged her with wasting police time much earlier than it was suggested in the book. She was so irritating. Next up we have Falling by TJ Newman. This book was incredibly boring. I read this in August and it is about a pilot who is told that he has to crash the plane or his family are going to be killed, I think is the gist. The first 20 pages were screaming, crying, throwing up, levels of stress and tension. It was crazy. It was just so, like, 
gripping and I had to read it and that is why I picked up the book. I read the first snippet and thought this is great. Um, past 20% I should have DNF'd because I didn't care. I did not care and looking back now all I can remember are conversations between the staff on the plane, like the air hostesses, the air stewards. Um, that's all I can remember. Genuinely nothing. I did not care at all. I was so bored. Number four, we have Lies Like Poison by Chelsea Pitcher, which is a YA thriller that I read in March. I listened to this audiobook in one sitting, and apart from there being a character called Belladonna, <laughs> I can't tell you a single thing about this book, and I couldn't the second I finished it. We will never know whether it was me or whether it was the book, <laughs> but this was so dull I didn't even take any of it in. I feel bad counting it on my books I read this year because I... nothing. Nothing. In third place we have The Perfect Sister by Zoe Miller, which I read in July, and oh this was bad. So. <laughs> on the blurb it is described as high voltage packed with intrigue and suspense and I have never read something more low voltage in my entire life. Um, it looks like a thriller, it's described as a thriller, it was not a thriller, I wasn't thrilled um, and a thriller that isn't thrilling is just dull and boring. This is about a woman and her sister who both have partners and the one sister is being moved out of a building she's lived in for a while and she's freaking out about it and we've got to work out why she's freaking out. It really, really kind of sucked. <laughs> it sucked. I'm keeping these relatively brief because I don't want to just whinge. So in second place, we have Bad Girls with Perfect Faces by Lynn Weingarten and I read this in April. This is about Sasha whose BFF is Xavier and Xavier had a toxic girlfriend called Ivy and then he gets back with this toxic girlfriend even though Sasha has developed feelings for Xavier and maybe has always had them. So she is not too impressed that this relationship is happening, she'd rather it wasn't. So she wants to show Xavier that Ivy is not all that great and um, there's a real fracture in their friendship. She really wants to protect him and get him out of this. So things occur and I listen to a lot of true crime. I listen to um, true crime podcasts, particularly Small Town Murder, which is two comedians taking the mick out of serial killers and killers, murderers, whatever, who believe that they can outsmart the police. And they are fully grown adults, in some cases quite intelligent, capable adults, um, who believe they can outsmart police. They can't in the vast majority of cases, uh, which it's very unfortunate in, in cases where people are getting away with things, but the vast majority of cases, we can find out what you've done, <laughs> really. We, me, I'm so in. I'm basically a detective, how much true crime I listen to. Obviously that's a joke. So in this book, a character makes some choices and as a teenager outsmarts everybody, everybody. And it's just so unbelievable that I can't, I can't at least make it believable that I don't know. I know it's YA, but surely teenagers even know you cannot get away with things. And finally, my worst book of the year, which I've been very excited to talk about since I read it. On the 4th of January, it was my first, if not second book I read this year, is Stags by M.A. Bennett. This sucked, <laughs> this sucked. My main issue with this was the writing style. It was so odd and I will never read another book from this author. I absolutely hated the writing style. On and off it directly like broke the fourth wall and addressed the reader but only sometimes and at very strange times and that's really jarring. Also it used very chatty language so it would throw in you know in the middle of a sentence um, which is just not how a narrative kind of works in my opinion. I should say this was a YA academia mystery thrillery kind of thing um, but I think even teenagers I get you can have books that are written in chatty language breaking the fourth wall that is a thing. There's a very good book um, what's it? You by Carolyn Kepnes which is told in second person and it's breaking the fourth wall but to do it on and off and to use chatty language mid-sentence on and off is so jarring and just not right in my opinion. And my main issue with this book, and I, I, I don't know whether I'm just being really butthurt over it, but this book 
completely spoils The Fault in Our Stars. I understand The Fault in Our Stars has been out a very, very long time, but this book came out three years after The Fault in Our Stars and spoiled the whole thing. <laughs> and it really bothered me. So, for that reason, and the bad writing, it is my most hated book of this year. So thank you so much for watching guys. Please do tell me what your least favourite book of the year is. I would love to hear it. Tell me if I've upset you. Mal, I know I've upset you over feed and for that I'm sorry but it sucked. Um, so please do let me know what your least favourite book was and if you have any opinions on the books I have mentioned. Thank you for making it 30 days into Clodmas. Tomorrow is the last day and I really hope you have enjoyed the past month. But for now, that is all I have time for. So thank you very, very much for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.